Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. So, we have uh, talked about dyno beating cars, and what this video is going to talk about is basically how to drive a dyno beating car, uh, one that beats dyno by far more than those natural dyno beaters, something that um, essentially is a dyno buster. In driving these cars properly, you can not only win and pretty much control the lobby, you can also prevent your car from being moved to faster lobbies. But in order for us to understand how to drive a car right, we also have to understand how to drive it wrong. And what happens when you drive it aggressively under dyno repeatedly is that the game punishes you by uh, moving you to faster and faster lobbies. This can happen very quickly or a little bit slower, it really depends on the tune of the car and the setup. So let's take a look what happens as we push this Venom GT, which is uh, set up on a Dino Buster tune in live and try to push under what it normally dinos, which it, incidentally is a 10.459 is what this car dinos. It is capable of running as fast as 9.4. So here we are, we're gonna start taking on opponents and we're gonna try to basically push the car ahead of the opponents at all times but in some cases we're going to push it really hard now this t4 car that i'm facing is pretty good in this lobby because that car itself um, from a evo standpoint is pretty good but as you can see it's very easy for a dino buster car to stay ahead of cars like that even though they will catch up uh, and i'm letting them catch up to a point but as you can see, I'm running under Dino already first run uh, by two tenths. So that sets up the lobby average for your car. Also note that that car is running 10.365, which makes it pretty competitive in this lobby. But I am more competitive because I can run much, much quicker. However, as I'm doing this right from get-go, I am already setting myself up to possibly get bumped into a faster lobby because 10.2 to 10.0 is a secondary lobby that's faster than the lobby I'm in, which I suspect is 10.5 to about 10.2 and a half. But I didn't really bust this lobby up badly yet, so I shouldn't be moved just yet. And here we're going to look for more opponents and see what we can do about continuing to uh, run the car harder than we should. Now, once we run it like this a few times, you will start to see that the lobby will change. Now, you'll either change because I automatically get kicked and I have to come back to a different lobby, or it'll change uh, when I leave the lobby and then come back in. But first, let's run another opponent. Uh, let's try to get the car to, again, run under dyno and later on what i'm going to do is i'm going to run some really aggressive runs to really push the limits on uh, busting up the lobby okay so again way ahead not that i mean that car is not going to speed up but i'm not going to slow down as much as i would otherwise once again this time i actually i think ran faster than last time yep this time i did a 10.1 he did a 10.7 uh probably did not drive his car as well as he could have or his car's uh, lacking a lot of fusions. All right, so here we go. Um, wants revenge for that defeat. Um, usually people want revenge when they know they can beat the time you just ran. Okay, so let's see what he runs this time. Uh, I just did a 10.1. So if that car's in a 10.3 lobby and he's getting under dyno like I know that car could, he could run a 10.1 run. Uh, in this case, I don't think he's going to come close. Um, could be that he's hoping to kick me from the lobby, which is fine. That's actually what I'm trying to accomplish here is getting kicked. All right, so another 10.1 run, this time 11.3. So obviously um, that re-challenge was more to uh, try to push me out than actually take me on. Maybe he had a bad run again. All right, <clears throat> moving on. So again, uh, three races in. Usually, the averages are looked at based on a 15-run average. So the game keeps track of all your runs within a lobby up to about 15 runs, averages it out, and compare it to your dyno. If you're running 2 tenths, 3 tenths on average under, it'll move you that much into a lobby that fits that particular 
average. Now, as you play the game longer and longer without um, slowing down, always trying to win, you're pushing that average slowly but surely away from your dyno, and therefore you'll get stuck longer and longer in lobbies. All right, so that's again a 10.3 opponent, but I ran a 9.8, uh, pushing the limits here. But as you can see, the first few races doesn't really move you right away. Some cars will move right away, but it's rare. Usually those cars are um, very low EVO, very high performance point cars, or closer to max cars that's simply down-tuned. They get moved a little quicker, but since this car is not fully built, in order to get the dyno busting, um, it's going to take a little longer to move. But again, I'm going to keep pushing it, and then we'll see soon enough that it will get moved to a faster lobby. One of the things I may have to do is actually jump out of the lobby and come back in to actually trigger it, but I can guarantee you I will get faster opponents after my averages have been um, at least a few tenths faster than what my dyno is, which again is 10.459. So I'm running six tenths almost quicker than what my dyno says on these runs. Um, averaging it out over the span of five runs, I'm still doing about three tenths, four tenths quicker uh, on average than where I should be. Okay, so in SXR, it's generally a tough card to beat in any lobby uh, for, for a T5. Uh, so once again, I'm going to push the car, make sure that I don't lose. As you can see, with this kind of a Dino Buster setup, initially you won't lose. I mean, you, you really can't. Uh, because it's very easy to stay ahead of your opponents. Even if you slow down, um, that's where you could potentially lose if you don't calculate your slowdown properly. But other than that, you're basically unbeatable for the time until you get bumped. All right. <clears throat> so now we're six runs in, in this lobby, against 10.3 uh, average opponents. 10.35, I would say, average opponents. That's the right lobby. I'm going to leave, come back. And I should not see the same cars now because having done what I did, um, I know I'm going to run a faster lobby. Now I'm going to dyno for you. Here you go, 10.459, just to kind of prove my point here. So again, 10.459, uh, we're going to keep abusing this car until it gets moved. Okay, back to the lobby. And now I should not see the same cars I saw earlier. And I don't. Not, that doesn't mean you got bumped. I mean, you're not going to always see the same cars when you come back to a lobby after you ran in a lobby. But with every car in the lobby pretty much changed, um, it's, it's almost a pretty good sign that you've completely changed lobby. However, the lobby still may not be uh, that much quicker. Okay, this, this is a uh, uh, Bentley. They're usually pretty good. Uh, let's see what he runs first so I can get a better feel for where I am in this lobby now. Again, I suspect I am now going to be in a quicker lobby, but we'll find out when we actually run it. And running one car in the lobby doesn't tell you much. You really have to run three to four cars to five cars and then kind of feel for the fastest end and the slowest end of that lobby. So again, <clears throat> he was pushing me pretty well, even though I ran uh, a 10, basically, 10.175. So definitely one bracket up from where I was before. So that's what happens when you take a Dino Buster and you're pushing yourself too much, uh, racing against other opponents. I'm going to do a few more to kind of give you the full feel, and then we're going to go back, take the same car, same setup, and then run it in a way and try to maintain the lobby and see the difference. The other way of running it is basically to run the bracket as a bracket should be run, which is you want to win by staying ahead, but you also want to be careful to keep yourself in the lobby. So here, again, I'm not taking it too easy. I slow down a little bit there for that one. This is just habit. I, I always uh, slow down when I'm ahead. But again, 10.2 uh, cars, 10.1 cars, not 10.3, 10.5 cars. There's going to be a few cars in the lobby, possibly, that's outlayers, uh, meaning uh, outliers, meaning they're, they're cars that are going to be way out of the bracket, either too fast or too slow, uh, which my car is one of them for the too fast end. But generally, if you race a few players in a lobby, they should run within that bracket. That gives you an idea what bracket you're in. All right. So here again, I don't 
need to lose to this guy. There's no reason for me to lose unless I choose to slow down too much or I accidentally slow down too much. So this is where people love the Dino Busters in the sense that they they feel in control. They know that this car um, can wreck anybody in the lobby. You can keep racking up wins and you don't have to swap. And it's unlikely somebody's going to actually beat you. But again, by driving it the way we're driving it, I'm pushing the car much harder than it really should be pushed. I jumped out and back in again. I'm going to do that just to see if I have um, once again moved the lobby. I may not have though. Uh, that really wasn't that many runs and that's probably not going to, well, or, or oh, here we go. Let's see what this guy runs. Okay, NSXR, always a good benchmark car to go against. Let's see how this plays out. This car very well could be in the 9.9 range uh, running against me, which should still be in the 10 lobby. But before we were in essentially the 10.2 lobby, and we started in 10.4 lobby. So as you can see, it's already moving quicker and quicker. I'm slow. Oh, 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 slow down too much. And I just got wrecked. I didn't need to do that, but you know, I did slow down 9.9. .9. As I expected, this car is quicker. Um, it's still the 10.1, 10.2 lobby at this point, uh, but we're facing a opponent that is a little bit quicker. Let's see what the other guys in this lobby is running because um, I suspect some of them are still in the 10.1 range and maybe one or two might be even be in the 9.8 range. Okay, so let's take another run. Again, this is the wrong way to do it and this is what happens when you push a Dino Buster and run it hard is that you will slowly but surely get pushed into faster and faster lobbies until it gets to a point where the opponents are actually running what you can actually run not what you dyno which is way faster than whatever your dyno is right because you're running a dyno buster so 10.0 10.2 so again not all opponents are going to run 99s uh, but again he could have had a bad run there it does tell me though that I haven't really moved much from the last lobby. It's actually around the same time range. Okay, so let's see if we can take one more on or if not, I'll go back and see if it changes again if I jump out. Again, you can see um, NSXRs, uh, Zs. These are T4 cars that can hit at least 10-0 or better. Uh, you notice that I no longer see the uh, slower T4 cars in this lobby at all. Okay, so here we go, LB Horicon. Uh, this is also a dyno beater, so this car could very well run something in the nines. Let's try not to lose this. Okay, so I'm way ahead, therefore my margin of error is pretty good. Maybe people are having some hard time driving this uh, Horicon, but I, nonetheless, I ran all out, um, didn't really slow down, and 9.499, that against a 10.3. So that car apparently is in a faster lobby than it should be, or he ran slower than he could have. Uh, it's one or the other, but it's relevant to my point because I just ran a 9.4, and my average is moving towards a greater, greater gap from what I normally dyno. Okay, so once again, uh, Z33, this is a potential 9.9 .9 car, uh, but generally runs low 10s is what I tend to see. So that means I have to run 4 tenths under my dyno in order to take that car down on a normal basis. Unless they drive poorly, they launch badly, uh, something prevents them from running perfectly. Okay, here we go. Again, um, launching and getting way ahead. If you notice the way I launch, uh, it's worth mentioning is I'm actually launching it early. So I don't land on perfect because if you land on perfect, you get a zero RPM drop and boom, you get, all right, 9.998. So again, a uh, little under 10. All right, <clears throat> so time to get some gas and then um, let's see where we're at with the lobby and maybe see if we got bumped because I just did a 9.4 run right there. Oh, no, it didn't change. Okay, so out we go. Just to see if uh, they'll, they'll have some kind of change back into live. Let me see if I bump up another lobby or not. 
because I'm almost at 15 races. That's where the average really, uh, oh, yep, it looks like at this time definitely bumped up. And notice no more Zs, only the NSXR now that's left because um, you lead upgraded, those cars can hit 9.5s. So therefore, you're now in a lobby that's definitely yet again quicker than what it was before. Let's see, the um, this LB of Entador, it's a very good car, but they don't want to race me. Oh yeah, he's probably swapping with himself, that's why. My bad, kind of butted in on somebody swapping with his own account. I've seen people do that to me, so I, I totally understand why they refuse. Okay, all right, so yet again, LB Silhouette. We haven't had a good LB Silhouette opponent yet, um, and this guy is a uh, elite level one, so... I'm not sure this is going to be a well-tuned, well-upgraded LB Silhouette, so I'm going to just race him and see. But again, he should be running 9A, 9.9s, not much. Oh, whoops, forgot Nitrous. That's not good. All right, so I lost. But let's see what the opponent ran. That's actually uh, what I'm really here to see. 10.0. And I suspect that's actually slow for this lobby. He probably is running opponents doing like 9A, 9.7s at this point. Um, so it's worth it to see if I can find one more opponent that'll give me a better feel. Maybe one of these NSXRs. I mean, that's obviously your lead upgraded quite a bit there. Uh, you can see the wheel change, the color change. Uh, you don't get that without some decent elite upgrades. All right, here we go. All right, so early launch, which gives me the ability to not get a zero RPM and lets me run all out fast, right? Kept it close there, um, but let's see what we got for the run times. 9.8, see, I told you that it would likely move to 9.8 and there it is. That is probably more realistic number for this lobby. So. I've now bumped from the 10.4 lobby all the way up to the 9.8 lobby within about 15 races. So that tells you um, how quickly you can be bumped with these cars. All right, now, enough of uh, this. Let's go back and see what a proper way of running should be. All right, so we're back, and now I am here with Sandbagger 2 the same exact Venom GT Spider tuned to the same exact spec uh, running the same exact tune, 10.459. The difference this time is I'm going to be a lot more careful how I drive this car and try to maintain the 10.3 to 4 lobby uh, over the span of multiple live races. The way to do that is you have to understand that essentially live racing in CSR2 is a variation on bracket racing in real life, which means there is a time bracket you're supposed to fall into. It's determined by your dyno and by the game. So this lobby that I'm bringing this freshly made car into uh, should be a 10.4 to 10.2 lobby, meaning if you, as long as you keep running all the time within that time range, your car should stay against opponents also running around that time range. But to understand how to run the time range, you need to control your car. You cannot go flat out against opponents because it will be too fast. So one of the things I do usually when I come into a new lobby to help preserve uh, the time to avoid quick bumps is I tend to run slow the first run and lose. But I let the other guy push to understand exactly what lobby I'm in. NSXR, as you've seen from my other video, is a natural dyno beater. And if driven property can run about two tenths easily under whatever their dyno is. So the fact this one ran 10.353 tells me I am in a proper lobby for my dyno of 10.459, which is actually on the slower end of the lobby. And by running really slow on my first run, it looks like I might have been moved or somebody challenged me as I was coming out. It's one or the other. We'll find out after this race. Now, in attack, also natural dino beater. And again, even if I'm in a lobby 
running against cars that are 10.4s, 10.3s, the fast end of the lobby could run low 10.3s to high 10.2s and stay in this lobby. The slower end of the lobby could be somewhere in the 10.5, 10.6 range. So I am able to uh, maintain winning without going too fast. And in this case, he disconnected. So I don't even have to run. Um, so now two runs, one loss, one abandoned. Uh, but right now I'm keeping my average slow. Let's go back to lobby again because when I came out of that first race, I didn't even get a chance to see who I'm up against. And I suspect the game actually bumped me. Uh, I didn't get a chance to check again. Okay. All right. This car uh, is the new Fast and Furious T5 uh, Nissan S15 Silvia. Mona Lisa, nice car, little hard to drive properly, but uh, let's see what it runs against me. This should be interesting. Always fun to race a new car that just got introduced into the game against the old guard. And yet again, no connection. This might be something up with my connection. I may have to uh, go ahead and leave lobby and try to come back in because something's up. Oh, oh here he comes. I think he beat me then because I didn't really run and it doesn't make sense that he did run and yet I win. So I should have lost that. Yep. Now on his screen, it might have looked like I ran really slow, but he actually didn't run that fast either. So notice my first run with a 1077. This guy ran a 107. It might be pure coincidence that I'm in a lobby where somebody's running 107, but it may not be. Yet again, I still don't have a full feel for the lobby. Now I'm going to run another guy and hope that it's not a disconnection yet again. So this is a problem with the game, of course, with live racing. Uh, it's shown in many of my videos where live racing just acts up, whether it's connection issues or you can't connect to opponents or whatever. Uh, live racing can be very buggy. All right. So once again, I'm pushing forward and then I'm going to slow down, slow down, slow down and keep it as tight as possible now this is kind of a pace setter run out 10.7 again i ran 10.66 it looks like my initial slow run pushed the car actually a lobby down which is interesting uh it happens i've seen that but what happens is it's actually very easy to also get bumped back up. So you don't want to rely on that. That's just the computer's kind of doing me a favor because this car uh, has not had much in way of racing. And that's why my first really slow losing run actually seemed to have bumped me down the lobby. I want to be in my normal lobby, which is 10.4 to 10.2. Um, I don't want to be in 10.7 because I'm going to end up running faster than 10.7 one way or the other very easily. And I don't want to set a margin that's actually going to hurt me. So let's hope that this is 10.4 lobby again. If it's not, I may run 10.4 this time just to kind of push my car into the proper lobby again. But let's run this guy and see. But again, as you can see, by running slow, um, I've actually helped myself out in some sense to not have to deal with a super fast opponent outright and the computer actually put me in a very competitive lobby now just kind of running so okay so yeah we're back this is 10.38 um so this again looks like i'm back to my normal lobby of 10.4 by jumping out jumping back in so i got a little bit of a favorable run there and now i'm back to uh, more of my normal range controlling the car you can learn how to control these dino busters by going to the dyno and practice different ways of driving it that gets you as close to dyno as possible but leaving you the margin of error to win you know you can do nine fours but do you really need to do nine fours the general answer to that is no you don't and you don't want to be way ahead of your opponent either you actually want to be very tight on the end so one of the things that i try to do is to always beat people by a hair what that does is it keeps your car running right near dyno, but even if you face an opponent who's a little faster, you can run a little faster and beat them. Over the span of multiple, multiple runs though, you stay in your lobby. This is how you drive and bracket race a dyno buster. This is the same way 
people sandbag in real life in bracket racing. The difference there is in CSR2, you bust the bracket, you get pushed into a faster bracket after a while. In real life racing, you bust the bracket, you lose. Uh, you run outside of your defined bracket time that you say you can run, you lose. So the game is a lot more lenient than real life bracket racing and reaction time doesn't matter. You can launch negative reaction, positive reaction. It's always a heads up race. The only time that the bracket comes into play and pushes you beyond the bracket is if you run consistently faster than your dyno by a margin larger than the bracket itself, which is generally about two tenths or two and a half tenths. So as long as you're running within about two tenths of your dyno, you really, it's very hard for you to get pushed. Um, you might get pushed over time anyway, but generally you can get away with long time of staying in the bracket, winning and running the car, Versus if you are too aggressive, and many of us are, you know, we don't like to slow down when we're winning, then you will get bumped like the yellow car did. So in this one, if you notice, I'm not even really using nitrous. I'm just relying on the fact the car is already plenty quick. And what this does is it lets me control the slowdown at the end a lot easier. Because if I'm using nitrous, I'm too far ahead. I have to slow down too much with downshifting. And right there, I almost ran my dyno. And yet I still won. So, and this is now about two, three wins in, right? The key here is that generally it takes about 15 races to really see what ultimately happens uh, when it comes to winning or losing or bumping or not bumping uh, through winning or losing. So here we go. Let's go against a LaFerrari um, unicorn that was a unicorn, but not anymore because Natural Motion made it available, and I think a lot of people was able to get it. Uh, still a relatively rare car to see in Live Lobby, um, but it is nice to finally see LaFerrari's being used again. All right, here we go. So LaFerrari is a hard car to drive, so I suspect I'm going to have a pretty good time against it, uh, and I slow down quite a bit at the end to try to get it to a closer run. But I didn't want to lose to the LaFerrari. Yeah, this one's a bad run, I think. Uh, I really don't think that car is that slow and would be in this lobby. Probably had a bad run. Not a big deal, but these bad runs favor me because each slower than dyno run um, balances against my slightly faster than dyno runs to keep the average where I want it to be, which is right near my actual dyno. And this means I won't get bumped and if I leave the lobby, let's leave the lobby. Whoops, I think somebody was challenging me when I hit the leave button. And now that might have bugged out the game. Let's see. Give it a second. Wow. Actually froze me. Okay, well, hold on. This can be resolved. Oh, oh, never mind. It worked. I think. Yes. Okay, so I'm getting out. I'm going to jump back in, okay? I just came out to jump back in once again to see if the game is kicking me around different brackets, which it shouldn't have. Um, if anything, it should keep me in the same or slower bracket. It may be in a slightly different lobby uh, of that bracket, but I shouldn't have moved to a completely different bracket is what I'm saying. Okay, so, okay, back here, and let's take a look at these cars. The names are not familiar, but the car range is look like they're probably in the same dyno range as the other group I just raced. If I can connect to this guy, I will, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Nope, it's not coming. All right, let's go again. Now, when it spins like this, it could be moving me to a different group of cars. Um, that happens a lot. Anytime you leave and come back or anytime you jump out of a uh, specific race with a car like where you use the refuse button where you jump back out using the back button there's a chance that you get moved to a different lobby doesn't mean it actually happened it's just a possibility because the, the game kind of shifts you around a little bit a uh, little bit based on what you just did so I, i'm still having some connection issues it looks like uh, which is a possible source of the problems here with connecting to the right cars now this is a very much elite upgraded car um, which is interesting because I should not have been bumped up without having run 
much under Dino. But we'll find out soon enough what the situation is. However, that car is far enough behind me, um, and I'll let him win because I don't want to run too much under my Dino. This is where self-control comes in. You know you can go faster, but you don't want to go too fast. Now, I kind of had a feeling he was going to be on the fast end, but let me go back out and find out where I am in the lobby. Again, 10.288 running all out in this lobby makes sense. Uh, that's not really all that crazy a uh, range as far as the dyno is concerned. Cartman trying to match with me yet again. I can't match. Um, I'm going to wait. Oh, re-challenge. Sometimes that'll work. Yep, that worked. Sometimes if they... Oh, and I got a completely different racer. Wow, okay. Very buggy, uh, but... Okay, now, 650S. Very hard to set up to beat Dino, especially uh, given it's not that high a Evo car to start with. You could set it up to beat Dino, of course, but uh, the price of that is that you may end up with a car that has negative Evo and runs uh, and get very poor RP on a win. I didn't have to run very fast. I beat them. As I said, now I'm in the right lobby. Again, the NSXR run full out might be on a 10.4 dyno doing that 10.288. So I'm still in the right bracket. And as you can see, jumping in and out all this time, I have not had any issue. Oh, extra Droid X. Ah, my buddy here. I uh, actually uh, was on the same team with him. Uh, team X Racing, shout out to the team, shout out to my uh, fellow racer there. Uh, I am myself on a break from the team grind. Uh, that's why I'm doing these kind of videos on the side rather than uh, grinding for points these last two seasons. I'll be back to Team X in the future, but for now, I'm just taking it easy and enjoying tweaking cars. Okay, are you invisible or invincible or something? I, I wish I could race you, dude, but I can't. Okay, and I'm going to let the timer run out. The reason I did that is I want to see if I got moved again. And I did. Notice I got moved again. And this happens quite often with Dino Busters when you're trying to kind of keep the car steady. Um, the game knows that sums up with your car. So it's very sensitive to all the runs you're making and your averages. And it's keeping track of it. Little bumps one way or the other happens quite easily. But... It should still keep you generally in the same uh, lobby range you're in based on the fact that you're running a certain average. And here's Cartman again. So there's the guy I ran earlier. So this tells me this Bentley should be no faster than 10.27 because, again, they're pretty good in these lobbies too. They're a T4 car that runs pretty quick. But it should still be the 10.4 lobby. And therefore, that car should not run faster than, say, a 10.2527 because if it was... It shouldn't be in this lobby. Okay. Doesn't mean it can't. I mean, you could, again, be doing what I'm doing, which is sandbagging a little bit here. Now, he's catching up pretty good. I'm going to let him win and see what the margin is here because that should have been, yep, 10.202. So that's a pretty good run out of that car. And that means that I'm in a kind of on the borderline here of getting into a faster lobby, even though I've been running relatively slow. Uh, that doesn't mean everybody in here is going to run that fast. These um, uh, Shark Huracans, for example, most players do not know how to set it up to beat Dino. Therefore, this one sh should be running all out and should tell me what bracket I'm in. And it's probably going to run a 10-3 something if everything goes well. Okay. Oh, that's pretty quick. But I'm passing them. I'm going to slow down. Let's see what we got. Now, again, I lost, but I want to see what he ran. 10.412. So I'm in the right lobby still. It's just moving me within the lobby bracket itself back and forth. So the difficulty of trying to keep a Dino Buster in a winning uh, posture is that you have to be willing to lose some to figure out where you are ultimately. Uh, this Bugatti here, if it's set up properly, would probably bust Dino a little bit. Not necessarily by much. The Cento can be set up to maybe beat Dino anywhere from a second down to three tenths to two tenths, depending on how you tune it. 
in the 10 second lobbies and this is why i love the 10 second lobbies there are a lot of variables variable cars so everything that comes up against you is a big question mark you can never assume that a car will destroy you or be crushed by you and in this case he disconnected or i disconnected and we don't have a real race and i'll take this opportunity to run really slow because if the game gives me the win and it did then that counts as a slow run and would help me again maintain my car in the same lobby so this is all about maintenance of the lobby bracket yes my car can run 9.4 and no i'm not going to run 9.4 because i don't need to i just need to win uh, and in some cases if i'm kind of not feeling it and i worry that i'm running too far under i may even let the other guy have a win that's basically how you do self-control runs to both win and still keep your car win winnable in a winning posture and this takes more practice with a car than you may think and the longer you can keep the car in the same lobby the harder it is in the future for it to get bumped because your averages will continue to be right near where it needs to be now this rx7 is going to catch up near the end here it's a top end car but i had a margin to slow down keeping it close keeping my win that should be a 10.38 run oh 10.425 even better so right around where i expected i was running and uh, this is all because you play enough with these cars in these setups you start to get a feel for how the car works i know when a guy's too fast and i also know when a guy is running relatively slow it's actually the right on target runs that are hard to estimate because you know it, it takes a little bit of feel to get the uh to see where your car's at versus where they're coming from to kind of make sure that not one you don't run too far under and two you're still winning okay so you kind of get the point here as you can see unlike the yellow car this one has not moved much um, from where it started if anything it bounced around a little bit it doesn't mean it doesn't move but it didn't move much okay i let that guy win um, because i'm going to jump out the lobby and i always make sure i lose when i leave uh, with my dino busters because you want to leave on a slow loss rather than a fast win to kind of avoid having that last number come in as your uh, lobby sitting average. Okay, so again, somebody probably tried to challenge me right there when I hit back. I'm just jumping out one more time. By jumping in and out, I'm doing this to kind of, one, see if the car's being moved around, and two, uh, it keeps the averages being recorded by the game uh, each time I jump in and out of the live lobby my average change from my dyno is probably going to be recorded by the game and therefore it helps me sit my lobby more and more so over time so notice I went right back into scoop 11 now so I'm starting to be locked into this lobby which I know is a 10.4 10.2 lobby so the fastest i saw in here is a 10.202 so far and the slowest is like 10.6 almost that is exactly where this car should be and therefore i'm feeling good that i have now set the car pretty much into the posture where i want it to be and again i have some margin of error to play with and i can always slow down that one i think he beat me at the end he was just a little bit faster probably 300s quicker than what i ran um all right, 500s, 400s. So, and I know that car does pick up speed at the very end. Notice 192 versus 326. First run in the lobby, knowing it's the same lobby doesn't mean I'm going to run all out. I'm just kind of playing with it. Now, I don't have as much experience with the Venom GT Spider, so I can't control the slowdowns as well as some other cars. But as you can see, that's ultimately the skill you got to pick up if you want to drive a Dino Buster, win. And keep winning without getting bumped is that you need to learn how to time your slowdowns so that the other opponent can catch up right at the end without passing you that also means you really have to know your opponent's cars how they operate whether they're a fast accelerating car but tops out or they're a slow accelerating car that has very high top speed each car is different you will start to learn them over time as you play but that's ultimately what's fun about the way to drive dino busters is you're actually playing a game of um, 
timing slowdowns. Okay, that one I ran a little too quick. That's a 10.2 run, uh, but I didn't want to lose again. That's why. Oh, 10.39. Okay, so I'm wrong. So he ran really slow. I slowed down a bit, but again, it wasn't too bad. I left a nice gap on that one. I usually try to keep them a little tighter than that, though. Uh, but as long as you're still running somewhere under or slower than 10.25 on average, you're fine. You're not going to go anywhere. This lobby will be my uh, racing lobby for a bit. And jumping in and out may move you within the bracket, but you're not going to move into a completely new bracket. Now, it doesn't mean you won't see new cars. That's another point that I want to make that in each bracket, there could be four to five lobbies of cars, depending on how many players are on that has the same dyno range. So Scoop 11, I saw him twice, right? But now I'm going in and I, I'm back to Extra Droid X, but Extra Droid and Droid Enforcer who's swapping with each other, Extra Droid is probably the same lobby as the Scoop 11, maybe with a marginal change of a few hundreds on average. This, it's like a daisy chain of cars all within the same lobby. And where the gaps come out is where you jump in. So when you jump in the lobby, you are filling the gap of some other player who just left or wherever there's a gap within the lobby. This is why sometimes you see, you know, you go in, you go, oh, this is great. I, I'm in a slower lobby. So this guy is moving pretty good. Um, I'm going to let him go. I just want to see what he ran. Probably 10.3 to 10, high 10.2s. Yep, 10.3 to 3. A little bit on the fast end. I know I can beat him. Um, but again, I just got in the lobby this time. I'm not looking immediately to crush everybody. Now, had I gone and made sure I won all of these, I don't think I would be that much different in overall position than where I'm now. Understand I've lost about four or five races, uh, but I've also done like seven, eight or nine wins. I mean, so it, it, it's really how you want to play it. The Venom GT, unfortunately, um, the Spider is a little harder to control because it's running a full second um, under dyno. Cars that can do, say, you know, about four tenths, five tenths, or three four tenths under dyno is much easier to control because you really don't have to slow down as much and therefore you can time the slowdown better. I'm using this car because I don't mind if I kill this car. And also I have two of these cars in this uh, Mr. Stranger account, which I've renamed right now to uh, see you on YouTube because it's I'm going to see you on YouTube. I'm making videos. So that is essentially the wrong and right way to drive the cars to use a dyno buster and still maintaining generally winning averages. And I want to say this again, you're not going to win them all if you want to actually keep a car viable. Now, if you are okay with saying bump the car like every 15, 20 races and then resetting it, then that's different. Then you don't have to be as careful as I am. Uh, but, you know, I don't have to slow down as much each time to win. Um, I could still break the dyno a little bit here and there and still win. It's a matter of how you want to run the car. It, it's different depending on who you're dealing with and how you run. But ultimately, you still have control uh, over uh, the runs itself, depending on how you want to do it. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of talking too much and giving up wins, but um, he's a uh, um, Tempest 1 player, so I didn't want to just take the win there. All right, so regardless, the point is the right way to drive the car, as I've emphasized a few different times, is to keep the average where you need it to be uh, within the bracket. As long as you're not breaking the average often and you're doing the right thing by keeping that average, once you've had about 15 races under your belt, that's your average, that gets set. You can still bump the car, but over time it becomes harder and harder because your average is always there and you, see I'm back to scoop 11. So I know this car is now set. Even if I run different people slightly faster on a few runs here and there, it's not going to kill me uh, in the long run. I'm still going to be competitive. And here I'm going to go ahead and see if I can take back my wins by taking on some opponents, but not losing this time. OK. OK, here we go. 
All right, this one I'm not going to let them win. Uh, in attacks come up pretty hard near the end, but I can always hit the brakes later. So I'm just going to downshift. Wow, that was a little laggy. I'm going to downshift closer to the end rather than uh, in the middle of the track because I can watch how much I let them catch up that way. Now, I downshifted twice to get kind of, in a sense, aggressively on the brakes near the end. 10.417, 10.461, easily controlled. Okay, so this Scooby 11 is a little bit slower bracket, uh, not bracket, slower lobby within the bracket than the extroid lobby that I was in. So by losing two or three in the extroid lobby, I got moved back down a little bit towards Scooby 11. I just won a race. So now I'm going to jump back and see if potentially I'll get moved back up to extroid if somebody in that lobby left or there's a gap closer to extroid. All right, one more, one more time. And again, I'm going to try to win these, and then we'll go from there. Still with Scoop, no problem. Let's take on somebody else. Let's see. Let's try Vino Steve 1. It's a Z. These are good cars. Uh, T4s will run usually better in a T5 in the equivalent lobby anyway. So this is going to be an interesting race. And again, this is a top-end car. That thing's going to start pushing pretty hard near the end so i'm going to definitely have to be careful to slow down at the end of the track not in the middle of the track okay all right so again they're slow start cars so they look like they're way behind you but watch it catch up as it gets towards the end here Woo! here it comes oh all right and that was a much faster run than i would have preferred but much faster than i would have preferred but again, it's hard to judge that 800s of a second. And I know I didn't slow down as much as I could have, but I wanted to win that. Okay. So once in a while, I'm going to kind of break out of my um, safety zone, so to speak, as far as running a little bit too fast. But as you can see, I'm still in the same lobby. I haven't moved. Now I'm going to see if I can run someone else a little bit slower and still win. Oh, oh wow. Another Fast and Furious card. Definitely challenge that. This is an interesting car. Let's see uh, how this goes. It's also pretty fast. Veilside Impreza. I can't say I love the look, but um, let's see how, how it drives in this game. Okay, here we go. Now, here's a car I am not as familiar with, but I suspect, given how it launched, that it is going to start catching up near the end, and boy is it catching up again i had to run really fast to get that win i didn't even slow down so that's a 10.1 something run 14118 wow that car is quick now now i'm pushing my luck if i keep running that quick i'm going to lose uh, not lose i'm going to get bumped uh, but i could probably get away with one or two more runs like this but that's not a car that i'm going to want to race repeatedly one after the other and winning so what i'm going to do is i'll let them have this run and i'll just run slow and he's going to catch up because i saw earlier how much and how quick that car accelerates all right so kind of buffering my average here 10.323 on his run i'm not going to challenge him again i know he's probably looking for a swap but that's not what i'm here for but I also know I don't want to have to run another 10-1 run just to win because I need to be careful of not getting moved out of the lobby here. All right. I keep saying I'm done, but now that I've just done another 10-1 run, I'm going to have to take another run or two before I leave the lobby just to kind of make sure my car's average doesn't get tweaked too much here. Okay. Huracan, depend on whether he's running under dyno, this could be... A easy or a tough race okay here we go oh i'm ahead of him that's a good sign if i can stay eh, if he start pulling on me that's a bad sign but he's not um, and i can slow down quite a bit that gives me a nice average run of my dyno which is good to take with me on the way out excellent okay so now I'm finally done. I know this has been rather long-winded, uh, but I just wanted to kind of showcase that 
I am, in fact, able to keep this car in the same general winning posture throughout the races. Obviously, I lost quite a few. Um, I could have won those, I guess, if I was concentrating and that, that was the goal. But it's more important in the beginning to take those losses to build the average than to wait till you already bumped to then start focusing on it. So by losing a few going in with a fresh car like this, I've actually now made myself pretty steadily bouncing between the Extroid and the Scoop 11 lobbies, which are both lobbies I can win in. As you can see, they're always outlayer cars, right? There are some cars that's going to go one end or the other uh, beyond the lobby, and you're one of them. So it's really your call how hard you want to push the car in the end. I wouldn't push it too hard, mainly because taking a loss here and there, but keeping the car a winning car for when you really want to beat somebody is better than winning every one of them and then slowly keep getting bumped up. So here it is. Did about... 10 miles um, worth of racing. That's about 20 races um, overall with the car. And still in the same lobby, still Dino Buster. Again, it's a car that does, just as a final wrap up, 10.459 on the Dino. And we can run as fast as a 9.4 um, in the quarter mile, uh, in the half mile. Now, I'm sure some of you have your own opinions about how this is. Um, obviously, if you don't care about a bump or you're pretty good about watching for bumps and decides when you need to to always reset the car, you don't have to be as careful as I am. You could be a little more aggressive uh, run to run and then just reset after 15 runs and then do it again. So the reset generally takes about as many runs as it takes for you to get bumped. Uh, so if you ran 15 runs and you got bumped, you're probably going to need 10 to 15 runs to bump it back down. And that's ultimately going to work out to be the same amount of losses as if you just lost here and there uh, while you're running. So 9.5, I didn't even run perfectly there. It should be a 9.4 something. But again, Dino Buster, but very usable and live. And that is the kind of my opinion on the right and wrong way to properly uh, use the Dino Busters as far as live racing is concerned. Just because you have a Dino Buster uh, doesn't mean that you should run it all out. You should always control it. And ultimately, the game is designed so you cannot win them all. Uh, it's possible to theoretically win every single live race in the game if you're willing to possibly uh, dump cars after every 5-10 races. That means you got to have a new car for every time you go into the live racing. Good luck with that uh, unless you have a heavily modded account where you can just constantly refresh and redump cars. It's just not realistic. So as a normal player, the realistic view is I'm going to lose some. I can win as more than I lose, generally speaking, but I'm going to lose some. And just understand that's just the way the game is. But bracket racing properly with a Dino Buster will give you at least the advantage of being able to control uh, the lobby for the most part when you desire to do so. All right. If you have your views and uh, comments and questions, feel free to let me know in the comments section. If you like the video, leave a like. If you um, like my videos and would like notifications when I put up new videos, then subscribe to the channel and this way you get notifications. As always, thank you for watching my video. I'll catch you next time.